2D representation of three-dimensional shapes is what today is going to be all about. You're going to be doing lots of drawing, pencils, rulers, definitely your rubber. Don't get these wrong. It is the Marmite of Unit 3. People have either got the brains that are wired for this sort of thing and can visualise what we're doing here, and others really, really struggle to see what the heck is going on when we're drawing these shapes. Okay. So, to try and help you today, I've got every resource I could think of to make this easy for those of you who do struggle. Some of you will pick it up like that, others will get mental blocks, can't see where the drawings have come from. So. Okay, so what we're going to do today, we're going to spend probably the first hour doing the, the first objective, and that is drawing nets, showing how they fold and make 3D shapes. So what we're going to do now, is I'm going to show you how to draw three-dimensional shapes. Let's look at... <laughs> Let's look at the technique for drawing these three-dimensional shapes. The basic way to do it is draw the shape you're trying to draw, the basic shape, okay? So in this case, a square. Draw another square offset from that square, and then just join the corners. That's the best way to draw a three-dimensional shape, basically, okay? If you didn't do it that way, I'll give you a chance to do some other three-dimensional shapes using that technique. So, draw a cylinder for me. So think about, what's the basic shape on a cylinder? Circle. 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 To draw the circle, draw another circle, and join them together. No, we did it right. Yeah? So yeah. draw the two basic shapes of whatever it is you're drawing. I'll give you one more chance. Go on then. Ready? This is your third strike. You don't this get this a, when this you're is out. Gonna be Okay, so if you draw them in line, it doesn't look as good. So let's look at our triangular prism. Two triangles, best to have them offset. If they're in line, the lines just run straight up. You don't get that 3D effect. So if they're offset, you get that 3D effect. Again, pentagon. Just draw another pentagon up there and draw a line to each. Okay. So that's just basic three-dimensional shapes if you were freehand drawing them, if that ever comes up. Okay. Good. It's a pyramid, uh, sorry, a cone. So, you've got a circle. Draw your circle. Put a dot above it, not hard, and then connect the two corners at the edge of the circle and draw it up. Yeah? Draw a, ooh, what should you go for? Triangular-based pyramid. So create, oh, it's a square-based pyramid. Square-based pyramid, create a square, stick the dot up there somewhere, and draw lines to the dot. For a triangular-based pyramid, Best to offset the dot a little bit rather than having it straight above the, the, the peak. And then <laughs> each corner long goes long. to the dot. Yeah? Two nets. So what did we say a net was? A shape open opened up. Shape. A shape opened up. So basically, a flat shape that makes a 3D shape when folded, or a 3D shape that's flattened out oh, yeah. either way around. Okay? Yeah. So you've got something that when you fold those lines and put it together, it makes that. Which Some people fail to see what's going on here with that visual, this is another way of doing it. So the gray surface is the front, it's attached to the top, which is attached to the back, which is attached to the bottom. And then you need to stick your sides on somewhere, okay? How you unfold it is up to you. So there are quite a few nets for, um, for our cube, okay? If I go back to the last one, these sides go here, don't they? You could also put them up there, it doesn't really matter. You could have one up there and one down there. So you can create quite a few nets for a cube. And what I want you to do is, I'm going to time limit this, is I want you to see how many nets for a cube you can come up with wow. on your own. Ready for the big reveal? Yeah, go on. There are oh my God. 11 oh, okay. nets. Oh. So, Let's just run around the class, we'll give everyone a shot at these, on whether these nets do or don't make these 3D images. So Fazana, shape number one, does that make a 3D image? And if so, which one? So number one, top left, does that make a 3D image? And if so, yeah, what, what shape does it make? It's, it's, uh, it's a cube. Good. It's a cube. cube, because they're squares, yeah. okay? So that's a cube, that's what you've just been playing with, that's one of the ways to make a cube. Emily, this one here, does that make it, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think it's got a reveal on it. Okay, so yes it does. What shape does it make then? Square-based pyramid. Brilliant, square-based pyramid. 
Go on in, Julian, next one. Does it make a 3D shape? No, that one doesn't. It doesn't make a cube. It doesn't make a cube. No. Next one. I don't remember seeing that. So Ali, there, does the next oh. one make a 3D shape? Um, well, I'd like to say yes, but the, it is. It, they're not drawn to scale, yeah, are they? Yeah. Yes, but there is something obviously wrong with it. Yeah, yeah the sides are too short. That's why. So I, it doesn't. Okay, yeah. that's why I was asking if yeah. they were to scale. Correct. So that doesn't because you see this side here has got to go up no, here. It's got to be that length. Okay, so yeah. visually you're trying to fold the folds to put it all together. Next one then. Uh, it? Yeah, it's, it's a square based pyramid. Good. So that's two square based pyramids we've seen already. <laughs> this one here and that one over there. Good. Next one. Ooh. I don't like that one. Yeah. Laura, yeah? Yeah, it's a cube. It's a cube. Good. Next one. Nasty one, no. Sam. No. Doesn't do anything. You think it does? What would yeah. it make? I don't have a clue. Why not? Rectangular. If you put it together in your yeah. head, what would it look like? Like um, um, like that. Triangle. Brilliant. Yeah. I was just about to pick this up and point yeah. this at you. It looks like that, which is a triangular. Triangular. Prism. Prism. No, it's not base. Triangular <laughs> prism. So it's a triangle with something behind it. Triangular yeah. prism. Okay, got to get on top of these names. Yeah. I've got a paper here, a Unit 3 paper. The questions are identical to these. What's the shape? What shape does this net make when you put it together? Okay. Uh, next one we'll do as a committee, speed it up a bit. Number nine, does that make anything? Yes. No. 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 Oh, it does. Oh. Yeah? That's one of our nets. I think it's in there for uh, a cube. Next one. No, oh, it does. It's there, yeah, actually, it that one. Does. Ten does. <laughs> no, I don't no. Think no. 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 I don't think it does, because when you fold no. this one up, this one touches this one, yeah. and there's nothing over here, yeah. is there? So that, I don't think that one does. That one Next does, one. yeah. That's quite a nice straightforward yeah. one of a triangular-based pyramid. And the last no. one. No. no. So we're spotting these quite nicely now, aren't we? Good. What you might have to do is they might give you the dimensions of a three-dimensional object and you'll have to create the, the net for it. And they're not all square, okay? In this case, I've got, what shape is it? Cuboid. cuboid. Okay? Yeah. So you need to be able to draw the net for a cuboid that they give you dimensions for on that type of square paper that I've given you. Okay? So the best place to start is always the face that's facing you. Like we did when we were recognising the shapes, yeah? Like when we were talking about three-dimensional objects and working out volumes, you start with the face that's facing you. So in this instance, what dimensions are facing me? What, what colour is facing me? The grey. The grey. So if I draw a rectangle to represent my grey, what are the dimensions? Five by four. Five by four. So on my net, I'm going to draw up a five by four rectangle. Yeah? And that's my starting point. That's a good yeah. place to start when you're drawing an earth <coughs> shape. When you're looking at these shapes, the front is exactly the same dimensions as the back. The bottom is the same as the top, and the side is the same as the side. That's what that means, congruent. They're exactly the same dimensions. So when you come to draw the back, you know it's the same dimensions as the front. So I've just taken, I've peeled off the front of this box. What was it attached to along here? Edge. Yeah, the, the top one. The top, it's yeah. attached to the top. So yeah. if I peel the top off now, it has to be attached to the front. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Five by three. Yeah? So it's got to be five along, and as Ali quite rightly says, but it only goes three deep because the top is five by three. Can you see that? Yeah? We had a few problems with this yesterday. Right. Okay? So it's still five wide because it was attached to the top, but it only goes three backwards. You're now going to take off <coughs> the back. So where does the back live? Oh, yeah. Across the top, because it was attached to the top. Time. And again, because it's congruent, it's the same as the front. Yeah. And then if we take the bottom off, we attach three. that to the back, yeah. and it's three centimetres. Okay? Not quite in order there. So can you see what we've done? We've almost done what we did with this. But instead of connecting these to the top, we've connected it to here. So the best way to draw a net is peel the object open like that, and draw the thing that goes down the centre, yeah? And then, look at the flappy bits, and you can put them anywhere. These flappy bits can go here, they can go here, 
there, one up there, one, it doesn't matter. But getting the centre bit is what throws a lot of people. And the best way to do that is start with the basic shape that's looking at you. So if you've got a, uh, a cuboid, start with the face that's draw that, then attach the next bit that's attached to it, and then the next, and then the next, and then add the sides on at the end wherever you want to add those sides. Yeah? Don't do Mondays now. Or Tuesdays. Many people say I don't do anything, but... Oh, okay, John. Okay. So, can you see what we've done there? You've got, you need a starting place, the starting place should be the face. Then just peel it open and attach the next thing. So in this case, it was the face, then it was the top, then it was the back, which is the same as the, the face, and then the bottom, which is the same as the top. Well, because that's a square, they will be all the same This size. isn't a square, this is a rectangle. Oh, no, the cu I mean a cube, like a cube. A cube one. would all be the same, all yeah. Be the same, yeah. Wouldn't it? Well, that's what your nets for a cube were. Yeah, they were the nets. So, yeah. but these these have got different dimensions, so they'll have different lengths on things, yeah. and that's what you've got to keep an eye out for. You're happy with that and how to do that? Okay. What I'll get you to do then to show me is on that squared paper. Let's call it one centimeter square paper. I don't think it's yeah. quite exactly one centimeter squared, but on the squared paper, draw the nets for A and B. And anyone that can do it really, really quickly without thinking, you can have a go at C. What I'm going to give you now before the break is. A quick worksheet, sort of summarising what we've done on nets, something for you to take away, a bit of a revision aid for some of you on the shape name. Let's do the, we've finished objective one on nets, do you want to put your papers away? We're going to move on to isometrics. What did we say isometrics were, can you remember? Same measures. Same measures, yeah. And there are two flavours of isometrics that I'm going to show you. The way of drawing three-dimensional objects is either using dotty, so you get the dotty paper, okay, and the dots aren't in a line. If you notice, they're offset, they make like little triangles, okay, they're not all in a straight line like a, a cube or whatever, they're all offset, so that's isometric dotty paper, and the other flavour is triangles, and all they've done here is they've uh, joined the dots, okay. So you need to be able to draw three-dimensional objects onto either dots or triangles, and these are called isometrics. Okay. For your information, more to do with what I give you in class, but certainly in the exam they'll give you this the right way. That's a correct way and an incorrect way that they line up. Because when you draw an equilateral triangle, it only points left and right. It doesn't point up and down on the dots. So if you, I've given, it, I've given you uh, some paper now, which is in portrait. If you turn it into landscape and try and draw the images, it won't work. And last night people were turning themselves in knots because of it. In your exam paper, the, the isometrics will be in portrait as you look at it. Okay? So there's a correct way and there's an incorrect way. And they shouldn't give it to you in the incorrect way. You're not meant to have the skill to identify the correct way or the incorrect way. The incorrect way is if you're doing the triangles, they point left and right. If they point up and down, then that's an incorrect isometric. And you'll see that in a minute when I, I show you some basic images. So we're going to start off with something really simple to draw on an isometric. We're going to draw a one centimetre cube, so a three-dimensional shape that's going to be represented on this isometric. So what's a good place to start on a, an isometric, do you reckon? Join the dots. <laughs> join the dots. That's what we're going to do, join the dots. The dots are meant to be one centimetre apart, slightly exaggerated on the board, but the idea is that's one centimetre <coughs> from there to there and from there to there. So this draws like a nice little triangle. Can you see if I try and draw it the other way, it's stretched. Yeah. yeah? So this, this paper is orientated the correct way. So I want to draw a cube on this dotty paper. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can see, I think, to draw How could you see it? It's just standing right out. Do you want me to do it? Yeah, go on then, even better. Even better. I'm gonna Spend all year trying now. to persuade people to come out. Yeah. No, no, yeah. I've lost it. Oh, it's there. Don't lose it because you can do it on any one. Oh, yes, yeah, all right, it's good. 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 Brilliant. Absolutely spot on. Brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, that's No, no, that's no. spot on. I can just see it. Yeah. Okay, if it jumped out, uh, brilliant. The tip for doing it is instead of doing the facing image, you do the top. So if you start off with a the top of your box, 
that's a one by one box. Okay? The top tip is whatever depth it is, drop that depth down, straight down, and then just join the corners. So it's a system for doing it. You're happy with that? Yeah. Yeah? Let's do it with the triangular paper, because I'm, I'm going to deal with them as if they're the same thing. Because this is just the dots joined. Yeah. So, draw your top, drop it oh, down yeah, one. I can see it down, yeah. Join your bottoms. Happy? Yeah. Okay. Let's do something slightly more complicated. So that's a, a cube, a one centimetre cube. They're not going to give you anything that easy. That's just to show you how it works. So let's look at something slightly more difficult that they might give you. So they might say, draw a cuboid of four by three by two. Okay. I don't care which one I start with. It doesn't matter whether I draw the four by three, the four by two, the two by three. It's irrelevant because whatever's left will make the same shape but in a different aspect. So what should we start with then? Let's, what four should we draw? Three. Let's start off with a four by three. So to draw our top of our four by three, I know it's one, two, three, four long, and one, two, three. Can you see how I've drawn the four by three? Yeah. yeah. All you need to do then is draw the parallel lines that make your four by three rectangle. Can you see that's what I've done? Yeah. Very badly, but kind of done. So what dimension does that leave? Go down by two. The two, yeah? So you just drop down by two. And then join them. Join the corners. Bish bash bosh. Bish bash bosh. <laughs> just in case you don't believe me, pick another two dimensions. Um it's got to be quite small to fit on there, isn't it? Sorry. F five no, by no, six. Th this one here. Just swap them around. So we've just done four oh, by okay. three. Two what by if four. We, if we start by the two by four, one, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, one, two, three, four. Drop down one, two, three, then don't we? Join the corners. It's the same shape, but you're looking at it from a different aspect. So before we looked at the four by three, and that was on the top, and all we do is move this. So it doesn't really matter which two dimensions you go for first as your, your top, okay? So let's, uh, let's try that with the triangles then. <coughs> Anybody like to try and come up and draw me a four by three well, by no. two well, on triangles? I've done one. Does someone else from one of the other tables want to go? Because me no, and you are right. all right. Go on. Go on. You can do it. I'll come. Right. Thanks. So, we're going four by... Anything. Four by anything. Don't draw it quite close to the top. So, sure. Yeah. One, two, three, four by... I'm going to go down by three. You're going one, straight two, down three. then. So you're doing your third dimension there. You're not drawing the rectangular what? top. Do the top first, Alex. Remember, do the top do first. Turn, do your two across. So do your, your two, two dimensions. Yeah. Across. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be like this way? Yeah, not here. that's it. Oh. oh, we can do it together. Oh, oh no. <laughs> 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 Who said comedy wasn't dead? <laughs> well, I didn't matter which way I did it. I could no, it doesn't. Still no. Yeah, you could have done <laughs> I was trying to teach you the technique, do the top first and then drop the third dimension down, but that's brilliant. So, you, so, okay. so can everyone see how that works? Yeah? So draw the four by two first, drop down the three, once you've drawn the top is the easiest way to connect the coils. Got there in a kind of different way. Sorry, you might confuse people. It's okay. Guess what's coming next? I'd like you to draw me a isometric drawing of a cube that is six by four by three on both dotty and triangular paper. Right, that's isometric drawings. If you want more practice, I can give you lots. We can spend all day doing these. Are you happy with isometrics and isometric drawings coming across them? Yeah? We could get something like that in your thing. You could quite easily get an isometric, a dotty isometric that says draw a cube of six by three by four. Yeah, no reason why it wouldn't appear. They might give you the triangles, they might give you the dots. I don't know, but it's in the curriculum, so I have to teach it. Okay, what we're going to do for the final part of the lesson is have a play with plans and elevations. Okay. Plans used in all sorts of designs. It's time for Lego. This is <laughs> Julia's favourite part of this. Okay. So we kind of have a concept 
of how our three-dimensional images look. We can do them on isometric paper. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually think about how to draw them. So if we're given a three-dimensional object, how we draw the plans and elevations. So the plan is what? What are you going to draw? Yeah, but it's a specific view. A plan is a, a particular view. Elevator view. Oh no, that would be the elevation. What, what's the plan it? of something? Is what, that what, how are you looking is at that something? Bird's eye, the net bird's eye view. view. Yeah, looking straight down. A plan is a view from above. Did that twice. An elevation. <laughs> if it, it usually comes with front elevation. Here they've got elevation from the front and from the side. Okay. This is what we're going to concentrate on now. I'm going to give you three D nasty objects, and you're going to draw plans and the two elevations. Okay. okay. So just a bit of fun. Name the buildings and the landmarks. So it's different. There's, a, there's three plans and one elevation view there. Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Yeah. Stonehenge. Easy thing. Is, is it Statue no. of Liberty? Is that? Yes, Statue yeah. of Liberty. Um, that's in Athens. That's the. Um, is that the Colosseum? That's the Colosseum yeah. in Rome. Yeah. Uh, oh, is Paris. That London, uh, maybe. Eiffel Tower. Yeah. Yeah. Eiffel Tower. Is it? Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> We're going to look at three, creating 3D shapes. There is this software tool. If you really can't get your head around 3D shapes, I can't I shorten like this. There's only one place on the internet to get it, and that's web address. It, take, it needs a flash player. But what it does, and I'll show it to you in a second, is it allows you to do this, which is what we're going to do uh, for the rest of the lesson. And that is... Play. If it, it's play, yeah. It allows you to build <coughs> 3D shapes and automatically get the plan and elevation view. And you can rotate this, look at it from various angles, so you can look at it from the top, the side, and whatever. So if this next bit really isn't sticking for you, go to that web address and have a play. Okay. So let's, let's talk about these 3D objects then. If they give you something like this, and they're quite fond of these cubes, which is why I bought these cubes for you. That was last week's pocket money spent. If I was going to look at that from the top, what would I expect to see as a plan view if I was going to draw it on my, my square paper? You'd have, the like two, You'd have the letter T, yeah. Can you yeah, see that? Squares, so if I look straight yeah, down, I'd have one, two, two as a short T, and, and then, then I'd have one, two, three yeah. across. So my plan view would look something like that. Yeah. I don't reveal everything. Okay, if I look at it from the front, what would I expect to see then? An upside down T. <laughs> Yeah, the three pretty much. The one yeah, one. but how many up would it be? Oh, three. Three, three, three up, three, yeah. three across the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly different from the plan view, isn't it? Yeah. And then if I'm looking at it from the side, you'd have four, two up, three up. Three up. Three you'd have four three down. No, three. Or well, three, sorry. One, two, three down. Three, sorry. And two two at side. <laughs> two, two <Connectors>. down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you'd have a three and a two. Happy? Yeah. So these are the plan front elevation, side elevation views we're going to be practicing. So what I'm going to start you off with is a card matching exercise. Okay. In pairs, groups of three, what, however you want to do it. You might have some space on your desk. <laughs> In your card sets, there are going to be perspective cards and isometric cards. Take the isometric cards out, do not use them. Okay. Everyone happy? What I'd like you to do now, not associated with the cards, we can put the cards away in a minute, is this little exercise with your blocks. You'll need to combine your blocks, so you're not doing it as an individual, because it will require quite a few blocks, more than a ten. Is here, I'm going to give you a front and side elevation, okay? I'd like you to draw me a possible plan view on your square paper, and then work out, using your blocks, the greatest number of blocks that I can have with that plan, sorry, with that Elevation, those elevation views, not the plan, I'm not interested in the plan, and the least number of blocks I can do this with, okay, in my elevations view. I'm not bothered about the plan because that will affect it. And that is it for today with respect to representing three dimensional shapes.